Happy Monday. We're going to be playing some Rakdos mid-range here for MTG, getting that top four, I think it was, in the challenge this past weekend. Two challenges every weekend. We pulled one list from there. This is what we're going to be playing, Rakdos mid-range. Now, this one um, has a little bit of everything. We've played the list a few times, different versions of Rakdos mid-range. I like this one probably the most out of all the ones I've seen for the most part. Uh, so let's talk about it. We've got these Inquisitions and Thought Seizes. So we have the turn one discard. We have Fatal Pushes and Lightning Bolts here. We also have a Blood Chiefs. So that's some good just removal uh, for creatures. Good interaction. We have Unearth. So we have this for when they interact with our creature, we can bring our creatures back. So we've got this kind of nice one slot here. I've split it across two here just to take a look at it because we have interactive pieces and also um, hand disruption. We have four magmatic channelers. Now I think this is maybe a little too many, but we're gonna go with it. So this is our card engine, if you will, helping us fill the graveyard for our Croxes, maybe even future Unearths. We have Season Pyromancer as well, tokens and drawing. So in this slot, you're getting a lot of card draw. That's not really what Red Black has, but we're getting there with it. Dark Confidants here as well, and considering the curve tops out at three, feels pretty pretty safe. You're basically playing a Jund Light version here, uh, is what I've called it sometimes. You're basically getting rid of the inconsistencies of three colors and green for Tarmogoyf, Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy, Maelstrom Pulse, and a few other nuance cards for stuff like Magmatic Channelers, uh, Blood Moon can be played a little bit safer, and you're getting to play things like Lightning Skelemental as well. So that's kind of nice here. So we've got this kind of red-black list. Blood Moon's really good recently. We're going to go change these to our correct moons in just a second. Liliana the Veil's in here as well, and this is what I mean by it has a little bit of everything. So we have Liliana the Veil, which you sometimes play only Lilies, sometimes you play only Blood Moons. And so this one happens to be playing a little bit of both. Has the Lightning Skelmental, and it has Croxa that's played at two and at four once escaped. Let's fix our Blood Moons, since we've got the new fancy ones. So three in here, one, two, three, nice. All right, sideboard, we have Collective Brutality, which is great against some of the prowess matchups that we're seeing recently. We have Plague Engineer, which isn't too bad against quite a few strategies as well, especially some with tokens. We have Kalidus in here, great against Jund, but one of my favorite cards coming up here in the list is Mom Dog. Mom Dog here, Hazard makes an appearance. And so we have Mom Dog as well, and this is clearly for Jun, but also just some of the other creature matchups. Does die to Dismember, that's a card we see not super frequently, but often enough. And so we'll see where Hazard comes in. We've got a Singleton Ashiok here. It's not bad. We got a couple Soul Guide Lanterns, four of them to be exact. And then think it's a little bit interesting with Angras Rampage, which is kind of like the Terminate slash Dreadbore slash a braid of the archetype. The only thing is that the player sacrifices it and they get a little bit of a choice, but with enough fatal pushes and lightning bolts, what you're really using this for is you can make them sacrifice the planeswalker or you grab another creature. And then we have a rain of, of gore. So this is an interesting one. I had to I had to kind of glance at this one. If a spell or ability would cause its controller to gain life, that player loses that much life instead. So this is interesting because this is against Uro probably matchups, but also Heliod combo, which is super sweet. So Reign of Gore is in here. I thought that was a pretty sweet, like super targeted meta card. And I'm hoping we get to play that and get to see how it's doing. It's always mom dog, always mom dog. <laughs> no, we weren't voting for favorite days of the week, heebie jeebies. What's in the board for Titans? Soul Guide Lanterns and uh, Reign of Gore. And if you're talking about something with amulets or whatever, Blood Moon main deck. All right, let's go ahead and play go to the Modern League here. Uh oh, I hope I have event tickets. Oh, that's fine. I don't know why that that scared me. That 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 briefing. 
Maybe a bad moon in the side? Maybe. How's it going, Foreman Red? No bad moons today. It was thought about as potentially a second league for tonight if we can make it through that far. Our, um, I'm just going to sit real still today. The back's bothering us, and we're going to see if we can get through a league and then see if we can maybe get through a second one. I do have a second list lined up tonight. We'll just get there once we get there. Take it one league at a time, or rather, <laughs> one match at a time. Let's go. Let's find our first opponent. Let's play this list. It did well in the challenge. Hopefully, we can do well ourselves. Match one. Let's go. Hit submit, opponent. That's right. There you go. All right. Why Reign of Gore? Because there's Heliod combo and Uro lists. Why not slap it down? It's very meta dependent. Also, Batter Skull is a cute thing to stop. Not sure I would play it against the Batter Skull, but it's a thing you could do. All right. Opening hand. I don't like two Skelementals necessarily. However, I've got. Channeler, I've got a way to interact with my opponent's hand and kill something. So I think I'll take it. I'm on the draw. Maybe we'll get this to be useful. And we'll we'll get a we'll get going. Haha, <laughs> Malakut. Okay. Well, card discard is actually super good against a scape shift style list. We'll see if it's scape shift or amulet here very soon. Let's start with an Inquisition. All right, so we have an Amulet of Vigor, Arbor, Explore, and a Simic Growth Chamber here. So I think I just take the Amulet here. I don't particularly care if they draw and get to tap, put another land in to play. So I'll take Amulet. Come here. Thank you. Bingo. go. Would you consider a hazard god in the list or in the sideboard? It's already in the sideboards right here. <clears throat> Mom dog. All right. Ooh, they hit their basic. Plays their explore. Are we gonna just see this down and forced back up to hand? Blood Moon would be hilarious. We do need to draw a land. We should be able to though. We'll play Channeler. Hilarious, you're supposed to come a little later. Guess I should keep the mouth shut. Play Channeler here, probably getting rid of Blood Chiefs or Liliana to try to find something for Blood Moon to get it down. Be best to find a fetch land or basic swamp, but we'll take whatever we can. Good luck. We know there's a forest in this hand as well. And there's the forest, there's the arbor. See if they have another land. They do. Oh, they have the double forests already. All right, all right. One, two, three, four, five mana here. Five mana, huh? All right. Well, we hit we hit the basic. The question is, do we want to put a Liliana out or do we want to put like Skelemental into play and attack them? Skelemental into play and attack. They probably keep Primeval Titan or they keep a land. So if we do that, we get this down. Wondering if Blood Moon makes sense here, though. Probably doesn't. I probably am just supposed to Skelemental this turn. Even attack maybe with this. I'm not sure I want to pitch anything, quite honestly. Let's go get a basic Skelemental and just swing in. This should threaten to prevent them from deploying a Titan, possibly. Moon is a Time Warp. What if they have a Bounce Land in hand? If I, I guess, I guess because this Simic Growth Chamber would be just one mana. Then that's true. We weren't thinking that. I still kind of like this line still. Okay, in for six here. Summoner Pact and a Primeval Titan, so they have one more. 
So if they do have this land, they're good. They have to explore here. And they put an amulet down. All right. So this is like perfect Liliana territory here now. We could also Blood Moon at this point. It's like super tempting to just Blood Moon here. I mean, I, you know what? I'm really tempted to just like Liliana as well. Get rid of the last Titan in hand. This gets rid of the last Titan in hand too and does six. Maybe I'm just supposed to do that. I think I'll, I don't think I'll just do that. Just because I have the other one here and I'm just like smashing in for tons of damage each turn. Welcome, Asteroid. Seen every clip on YouTube? Whoa, that's crazy. It's crazy. All right, Primeval Titan again out. If I almost can disguise this Blood Moon, it almost would be a nice gotcha next turn. All right, so we do have Hanawar Battlements here. This does mean that they're good to go. They're good to go on this. What I could do here... One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. I'm not sure they can recover from the third Skelemental. I'm just wondering if I have to deploy this or not. Probably don't. Let's see if I can hide it here. Let's kill this off. And let's hit them for everything. And that'll put them to one. This should this should be enough. Putting them to one, they have a top deck here and I have a 1-3 on board. I'll have a Liliana to kill with. We are doing Rakdos. What's up? Ooh, D20. Look at the surprise. Dude, the surprise one's really cool. I like that one. All right, opponent, did you get there? What'd you get? What, what? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. Okay, so, Angrath's is kind of interesting because it can pick off the amulet, which interests me to some degree. I don't mind Mom Dog potentially in this list as well. Soul Guide Lantern's a no-go. Collector Brutality, probably not. Ashiok's probably belonging in here above Mom Dog. So we're probably looking at maybe like this, going right to left here. What do we not want? Blood Chiefs. Fatal Push. Mm -hmm -hmm. You like the first four? I like these first four as well. It's just a matter of what do I want out of this out of here. Crocs is nice. It's big. Discard and finishes the game. I'm thinking Dark Confidant might not be as necessary in this matchup. Because for me, Dark Confidant just enables Dryad Valakut kills super fast. Hazard might not, that's why it's in the fourth slot. I think I could actually take out like one Fatal Push, possibly. I could also possibly take out the Unearth or a Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt's a bit odd, it kills Azusa but doesn't kill Dryad. Unearth allows me to recur a lot of these kind of pieces. Am I going to care though, or am I going to be interacting? That's the question. You don't like thirst? Yeah, I guess thirst makes sense. Two or less is a little less frequent. And by the time we get up to four, we should be doing something else already. But like to me, the blood chiefs, you could kill, you could actually kill 
like Primeval Titan. I kind of like that, but you know what? I like that enough to keep it in here. I'm going to drop um, an Unearth. We're going to go with these three. First time catching. Thanks. Memphis Tran. Memphis Tran. You just finished building Vesper Rock Reanimator and Paper. Nice. Good luck. Good luck. It's interesting. We'll just say that. All right. My opponent's kept seven. I have a Thought Seize here, which is kind of interesting. I don't have a Fetch for the Fatal Push. We've got a Season Pyromancer. Wondering if this is enough or if I need to dig deeper here for something more interactive like Blood Moon on Turn Dream. Uh, Titan may not be it because you have Blood Moon. We have Blood Moon. Titan could just be a 6-6 six, six that I have to deal with. All right, I'm going to keep the hand here. I think it has a little bit to be desired, but I'm going to lean heavily on this Thought Seize and Liliana. We'll see if it pays off. There's a Relic. That doesn't really worry me so much. We don't play as much out of the graveyard as my opponent thinks we do. Thought Seize here. All right, we have a Primeval Titan and I have a Summoner's Pact. Interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I just take the Summoner's Pact and be like, I will, I will beat a Primeval Titan here. I think I can beat a Primeval Titan. I don't particularly like the idea of a Summoner's Pact getting whatever they want. It's obviously bad if the next card I draw is an Inquisition, but I, I like I like that option. Pact has been taken. They take my Thoughtseize. We could, but we don't have the Blood Moon in hand. All right, Golgari and Ghost Quarter, so GQ, GQ's in hand. I need to shut my mouth when I'm talking about the cards that I potentially could draw. You want to know why? Because I end up drawing them. They're no longer potentials, they're actuals. Let's see what the other card was. Full information is always nice. <laughs> I'll take that. Get out of here. All right. I'm going to wait on the fetch land, even though fetching next would be better. <clears throat> because the fatal push would be pretty good. Whew. Snuck out a dryad there. We're about to get this Liliana down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take my graveyard. Yeah, I, th I think I'm good to go with the Primeval Titan because of the cards they have. They're all coming into play tapped for the most part. And we'll be able to do Liliana a few times here. Liliana's probably going to get rid of the Blood Crypt, unfortunately. Um, even though I'd like kind of a fourth land in case I run myself into a Croxa. This is a little bit harder with this plus with Jukabog. So maybe Season Pyromancer and just generate some tokens with Fatal Push plus maybe a future draw. Looking decent. Looking pretty decent here. Plays the Ghost Quarter. That's no longer in hand. I just wrote GQ in the chat so I could remember due to the bounce lands. The bouncy lands. All right. Chandler, you're a turn late here. It's got to be, unfortunately, Liliana. And I say unfortunately. It's not that unfortunate. <clears throat> we'll go up here. We're going to be getting rid of the Blood Crypt. I do fetch the basic on the off chance that I do find myself a Blood Moon next turn. We do need to get Liliana down because the game plan from turn one was exactly this. And so let's continue to go this beautiful route here. My big hope here is for us to top deck Blood Moon here. When they play Simic Growth Chamber, they need to bounce Ghost Quarter to stay on curve. And they won't be able to Ghost Quarter themselves for a basic. Opponent does finally draw with the Relic though. <clears throat> let's see what else they've got for us. Luckily, Liliana can down tick on, say, like a Dryad. We'll see. We'll see. 
Feeling a bit ahead of our opponent, even though we were on the draw. I think we've taken the kind of the turn away from them based on them not having a amulet. Long pause here makes me think they have Azusa, Dryad, or something else, and trying to figure out if they generate enough before I would use Liliana to down tick. There's the amulet. <laughs> Larry West on tap. We have Primeval Titan Simic Growth Chamber. We have a th tireless tracker here. All right. Interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just down tick to kill this. I know it's Primeval and Simic Growth Chamber. Put Ashiok. Then we down tick again on Primeval Titan if that's what they want to do. Seems decent. We'll use Ashiok after down ticking here. And we'll go after them just to see what else we grab. Tireless, Dismember, Summoner Pack, Tireless, and a Gruel Turf. Seems good. We'll keep their exile available to us just for good keepings. Now if we had a Blood Moon, it's looking better because Ghost Quarter and this, they're not best friends. When you do it to yourself. All right, now what opponent? We have this weird Simic Growth Chamber untap bounce something. We can play Primeval Titan, but that's not good with Liliana here. We have an Ashiok making your Titan just a 6-6, by the way. We top deck a land and a Blood Chiefs, just saying. We have no clock on our opponent, so they've got time. How much, though? We'll see. Not to mention this shut down, potentially this transmuting. It's a, it's a solid top deck. Thanks, Ashiok. Four mana. Puts the Simic Growth Chamber into hand. Bounces. T West. Titan, which does nothing. Should never down tick. Yeah, I know. I am of the opinion that I like to down tick, though. Hmm, okay. This turn's probably Season Pyromancer first. Getting rid of Channeler Fatal Push, leaving Unearth. I could mill myself with Ashiok here if I wanted to. I do have an Unearth now. If I mill a Lightning Skelemental, things get super interesting. So let's go ahead and mill ourselves. I do want to go for this. We hit a Skelemental. <laughs> Goodbye, creature. <laughs> Goodbye, creature. Hello, Skelemental. I'll hit you for six and clear that uh, T-West you got in hand. And you're done. Primeval Titan was just a 6-6 there with a little bit of Ashiok. Using Ashiok's down on our side. Getting the Skelemental. Getting the win. Who says don't down tick Ashiok? The reason is so that your Ashiok's nice and healthy, but when you want to just win, just go win. Match one complete. Easy mode. Rakdos midrange. Probably, in my opinion, one of the stronger mid-range lists out there right now. Exactly. What does Fran know anyway? It's not like Fran. Fran tells you not to down tick with Ashiok because Fran plays Titan. All right, let's join our next match here. <laughs> Fran's opinion's probably right, but me 
maybe there's other alternate motives. There might just be a few. <laughs> now I see the big picture. All right, let's, uh, eh, we'll keep this hand. It's extremely interactive if my opponent plays creatures. It's not so much if uh, they don't. Green, white, just don't be boggles and we'll be happy. I like this avatar, by the way. It's nice. Oh, noble. All right. Well, um, let's see here. Let's fetch shock here and bolt. Fetching and shocking so that I can Inquisition or Thought Seize pretty nicely next turn. And I think my life total may not matter as much here. I think getting rid of the noble opens me up to doing both of these next turn. And doing both of those next turn looks like a great way to limit what my opponent can be playing here. We'll see if we get to fetch and shock, though. It may not be allowed. <clears throat> Who knows? Definitely bolt, though. Stop them from ramping something crazy out here. There we go. Fetch, shock, bolt. Get out of here. Go ahead, opponent. Blue is not what I expected. That's a nice top deck. Let's start with an Inquisition here. Let's play our land, then start with an Inquisition. And then we'll see if we want a Thoughtseize. We probably will. Rattle Chains, Rattle Change, Spell Queller. Well, Spell color gone. Let's go ahead and thought seize away here. Seeing very little reason not to. Just take the rattle chains here that they have, and that way they can't protect the other one. We have two lands here. Probably just bolt channel our next turn, but we could just skeletal them to clear the rest of their lands. Flooded Strand is played. Plains unknown card. 2-1 in. Ooh. Love to shut him off green here. Let's test to see what else they drew here. We'll play Skelemental and clear the hand. Or at least clearing a planes here, probably. Unless they have exactly Spell Queller, which in which case we can just Lightning Bolt next turn. Fetching, non-basic by the way. In for six. Hits, planes, and the other discard was a Skyclave. Nice. All right, Blood Moon's looking super nice right now. We do have some double Black Pip things. Not going to worry too much about those. Let's attempt to play Blood Moon here. Blood Moon first, then Lightning Bolt. And probably just go ahead and hit the Selfless Spirit here. All right, it's 10 all here. I have a 4-4 four, four coming down. My opponent has a 2-1 and their lands are a little bit tied up here. I hit a fatal push off the top. Is that even allowed? Trying to see if my opponent would play something before attacking here, but we're good, we're good. Just hit for four here. I see very little reason not to. Go ahead, opponent. We got a 4 4. You're dead in two. Bolts off the top are lethal. Aether Violet, one. Combat. In for four. So I can go to six pretty safely here. If I go to six, they play a 2-2 two, two, and then two Anthem effects. That'd be crazy. I think this Thought Seize seals this game up pretty, pretty nicely. Rattle Chains plus an unknown card. Collected Company is not a bad one to snag here. Okay. So we have a Rattle Chains to beat. They attack, so they have a blocker. 
We'll go for attacks and see what they have to block with. All right, it's a wander. Cool. They must block. They will. <clears throat> Here's the last draw of the game, probably. We'll see what they get. The Thoughtseize felt pretty good. We'll see, though. Back on defense. They do not have one. Let's go to kill. And in. There we go. Woo! All right, spirits. Let's have a battle, shall we? Shall we? And Grass Rampage feeling pretty good. Getting rid of Creature, maybe, but mainly the Artifact. Plague Engineer is kind of interesting. Naming Spirit is not the worst thing. Selfless Spirit, Rattle Chains, and the Wanderer could be killed. That being said, if they get too far and they get all the pumping and abilities they have and stuff, it may not be as important. But I like that. I don't like Dark Confidant here. Let's bring this down. Not sure I need all the Thought Seizes, though it worked out really well there. I don't know if Brutality is really worth it, honestly. It's hits. It's going to hit what? Collected Company? Or it kills something that's X and 2. I have Blood Chiefs, Fatal Pushes, Lightning Bolts. And grass. I think that's probably enough. We even have Liliana as a potential edict. I think that's all fine. If I'm if I'm being real honest. Sometimes they'll bring in relics. I don't know if they think I'm I mean I guess the channeler beat them down, so that'd be a reason to bring in a relic, making me want to take one on Earth out. Blood Moon's a reasonable card in this matchup. They'll probably fetch basics now that they saw it. Probably okay to strip one Blood Moon here and one Unearth with the intention that they're going to bring in something like... like a Relic. I think this is fine. I don't mind making their creatures just a bit smaller, especially if we have a relatively clear board here and get to play a Plague Engineer. It would mean, one, we're not taking as much damage, and two, that some of their creatures would be just 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 dead all right one lander here although it's interactive i don't particularly like a one lander here hmm. crocs is not the greatest let's mulligan looking for a few more lands <laughs> There we go all right we can keep we can keep two lands here probably and ditch the mountain i could even You know what, I can probably ditch the Prismatic Vista. Just trying to take the absolute minimum amount. Then we have the Lightning Bolt for either Noble or an Inquisition for a creature. Blood Crypt's great to see here. We'll see if we can be painless with this. Inquisition. All right, what do we got here? We have a Rattle Chains. I have a <laughs> Glass Pool. Got a Supreme Phantom here. I've got the Skyclave. Well, Skyclave's not that worrisome. Maybe I'd take just the Rattle Chains here since I have the Lightning Bolt. It's something that protects their creatures here. So if they just decide, okay, I have to play Supreme Phantom, I can play Blood Crypt Tapped, Lightning Bolt the Supreme Phantom and just be kind of happy with what we've done. So lightning bolt here, tap land, go. <clears throat> Super easy. They've got two pain lands here as well. This may just be like channeler next. Flooded strand here, wander. Oof, drawing a lot of lands. All right. Gonna play channeler here because channeler plus season pyromancer next turn gives us a whole lot of looks at all kinds of things that we could hit. Um, we basically know their whole hand here. We know it's a glass pool mimic that's going to either copy something or something else. If they do the Skyclave on the Channeler, I'm not like the most upset about losing just a Channeler to the Skyclave. Like this is probably just not 
Not that important. Am I not afraid of spooky ghosts? Because we're friends with Casper. Glass pool here, horizon and glass, or sorry, breeding pool here, horizon and glass pool mimic left. It's kind of an interesting card. We'll make them sacrifice a creature here. We're getting one of them out, and if they take this one, then we just have a nice solid little 2-2 <clears throat> that we can block at some point. Thanks for all the great content. Your commentary is always so clear, and it's amazing how often you know exactly what card is coming next. Look away. Look away. Let's try to lightning bolt this. Land and Season Pyromancer here. Ooh, we have a collected company. Nice. I actually prefer this. Season Pyromancer digs me cards. A spell Queller. And a Self of Spirit. Woo! All right. Well, we're not getting much down anytime soon. Sorry, we're not getting much to kill this stuff soon. I'll take a Fatal Push off the top for Self of Spirit. Nope. All right. All good. Looking good. We get a 2-2 if they sacrifice this. If they sacrifice this, they're not protecting their board. Looks like they're just going to come in with the flyers. This is where like a Plague Engineer would be super nice because the Plague Engineer could take care of one of these. Uh, we know it's Glass Pool. We don't know about the other card. Let's go ahead and lead with Liliana to down tick with. And we can shock in Season Pyromancer. I'm guessing another Coco or another Spell Queller. Another Coco. So we hit back-to-back -back Cocos, this is going to be super hard without something like a Damnation in our sideboard. Skyclave plus Supreme Phantom, everything's getting beefy and growing larger. I'm not even sure I can shock now. Lily. Three, six, three, three, four, five, six. We'll go half health here. They might throw something at Liliana here. Season Pyromancer, see what else we draw. Nothing of super value here. Glass pull on Skyclave takes this three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll see if my opponent sees the line. I'm not really doing anything if I um <clears throat> Don't play Season Pyromancer there. Cool. All right, so we got to beat him on the play. I like being on the play, though. I think that's going to be better and, and more important here. I've been trying Red-White Lockout very much lately. Is it just not well positioned right now? It struggles a little bit because strategies are putting a lot of lands into play or are playing Aether Vials. But if you play a version with Suppression Field, you'll have a better chance at winning. All right, so we're on the play now. Um, man, that was a bunch of... That was a bunch of... Collected Companies. I'm going to take one Thoughtsies out and bring this Blood Moon back in. Ten kind of tempted to take one Plague Engineer out. That or a Season Pyromancer, just a one of and bring the Thoughtsies back in because I'm on the play. Getting a Channeler down early probably helps us a lot. So let's keep that at four. Let's do this. All right. Obviously, we want to play first. Uh, Interaction, Inquisition. Not much after. Hmm. I don't mind this hand. Could be better. All right. Let's just rip a few nice spells off the top. I did say Croxo is kind of weak in this matchup, but uh, apparently my opponent's just going to play a bunch of noble hierarchs. In that case, maybe I just play Croxa. Get rid of path. Huh. 
This is a very weird hand. They have, they literally kept six lands essentially. They're kind of like me. They just want to rip a spell off the top. All right, I'm going to take the path here because if things stumble for a few turns and neither of us flood out, eh, Crocs is going to be our, our win. I'm not worried about the aberrations. We're going to get them before. Don't worry. Basic forest here and a noble's blade. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to name human. <laughs> Let's play Croxa. I probably shouldn't name human, but I, I really want to now, knowing that the only other card they have is a sweet noble hierarch. Hallowed Fountain gets pitched here. Plays new noble. I mean, are you not supposed to here? Plague Engineer's name human? Just be like, sure. Rising Canopy, we know it's two lands and an unknown. And they're attacking. Yeah, this is just board wipe. It's gotta be. It can't be Bolt and Channeler, right? It sets them back so nicely here, and if they go to remove this at any point in some fashion, and then I can channel or bolt. Yeah, this is looking like this is just unhuman. Good name, Druid. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Goodbye, Noble Hierarch. All right, are we gonna have to? What are we gonna have to deal with? Skyclave, draw a skull, Captain. All right. Well, I guess I'm killing the Drog Skull Captain here. And just getting in for two. I like to keep my Plague Engineer alive. Drog Skull Captain's a bit weird for us to run into. Did they, they got rid of this Windsuck Teeth at some point. All right. I don't need to fetch here. Doesn't really do me anything because I'm going to discard it anyway. So let's discard. We'll get two cards. I'll take a lightning bolt, I suppose. Let's try to play a Croxa into this. Now the Croxa is like super safe because I have the lightning bolt and they don't want to counter that. It's not like they wanted that anyway. Make them discard a card here and then attack them with a 2-2 death toucher. Collected company hits the bin. That's good to see. A little bit scared too. Till the end of this turn, huh? All right, I didn't have an end stop. I should have put an end stop. I lose a bolt there. We'll just um, ignore that happened, shall we? All right, activate this. Lay a bloodstained mire down. Fetch, do the crocs of things. One, two, three, four. We'll leave other crocs in there just in case. Let's see if they've got a counter. Looks like they do. Might be Spell Queller, yep. All right, I'm still gonna attack. My creature has Death Touch. I could have named Druid, yeah. All right, um, let's see if Skelemental lands. We have another counter. Actually seeing a collected company is not the worst. It'll go into play and then back to graveyard because it wasn't escaped. Selfless and Supreme Phantom here. Skelemental hits. I'm just gonna attack with everything here. I'm not worried about a noble hierarch. In for total damage here. <clears throat> Our bolt mistake is uh, slightly costing us here. Selfless Spirit blocks over on the Plague Engineer. Trades, down to two. 
My opponent discarded a Wander, so they took the top card. They can trip the Horizon Canopy and miss. Doesn't do much for them. There's a Thought Seize. Well, I don't think Thought Seize gets me there. Let's see what the other cards are. Well, there's an Unearth and a Thought Seize. Let's do Unearth here and see if I can Unearth Skelemental for the win. We're doing this because who knows what that card is, and I just want to smack them for six. We got rid of a Coco, and my opponent's double Coco'd here. They will need Spell Queller probably only here to win. They do not, but now they have enough here. That the unearth on the skeletal is no good, and they're going to take my mega channeler. So maybe it was supposed to be on the croxa there, because now their creatures are too big. I'll still attack and I'll at least kill a supreme phantom here. They'll double block with two supreme phantoms. Okay. Oh well, in this case, do I do this now? One, two, three. One, two, three. This is four. Getting a four or a two, two here. Threatens that they can't attack with everything. They can't tap this down. They can attack me for six. I probably do it just this way, right? Yeah, we probably do it this way. And then I have a two, two as a threat as well here. So that sort of holds back a creature. Makes this bigger, yes. Cantrips or Horizon Canopy. So yeah, if I unearth the Crocs of there, maybe we, we get there. Hits for four. Do they want to hit worth any more? They got to be afraid of like a fatal push as well. I could top deck a fatal push and take one of these out. So they don't have any way to counter anything here. Top is a marsh flats. Let's see, three, four. We need this in the graveyard. Four, five, six. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I guess I just have to go for this and and. It's not enough. So our misplays were Bolt here. And unearthing not Croxa. If we unearthed Croxa there, they couldn't activate like I wanted them to. They'll just discard any card here, not a land. Yeah, it discards a selfless spirit. Hmm. Bummer. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So our skip over a bolt, forgetting that we didn't have an end step there. Mistakes were made. I thought I could go to end step and forgot that I don't put a, a stop on my end step. If we would have had the stop, then I would have been like, okay, at end step, now I bolt. Trying to get them to do something like in second main. Small mistake. Cost us the game. We had two mistakes there that we could have improved on. Keep those in the back of your head. Because if they, we did the Croxa, then I don't know if they actually can trip that, that Collected Company. Because if they miss the Squeller, then they have no cards in hand and lose. Tough to say. Match three, though. We'll keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Got to play a deck a few times to get it all under our belts here. Hmm. Oh, so, well, a lot of lands here. A lot of lands. I don't know if we can keep this many lands. It's a lot. We'll mulligan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right. Keep this. Get rid of one black cleave glyphs. Got that removal. Got that dark confidant. Let's go. You're glad to see we're playing Reign of Gore sideboard? Thanks. Bloodstain Meyer, go ahead, opponent. Let's see what they've got. 
What are we playing against? My opponent mulliganed once as well. They took their draw, so they're back up to seven. The game's just playing playing six card hands, not seven card hands. Seagate. Well, I want Blood Moon now immediately. Simeon Spirit Guide. Desperate Ritual. Blood Moon. Well, I got a swamp. That's what I got. Opponent's doing that whole turn one thing. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, how do I win this game? Do I need to be faster at finding like a thought seize here? Or do I discard something? I probably discard. Discarding something when they already put efforts into this is just like playing against Red Prison where all the resources are spent on Blood Moon here. And so we have probably time to get Dark Confidant down. Pact of Negation hits the bin. All right. We're a Blood Moon deck as well, so I'm not so concerned. This is probably dead. This is helping all of their cards come into play on tap, though, so. Ooh, Inquisition. All right, well, we have time. Do I, mm? Yes. Because I could steal a land here. Oh, yes. All right. All right, so they have a turn timber, and they're going to play that turn timber. So we have to beat whatever they drew, which I think is feasible. All right, Dark Confidant, let's get things going. We got to find more ways to interact with my opponent and beat them down here before they get Charbelcher down. Now they opted to play Blood Moon really, really fast here when I showed them Bloodstained Mire, and this is actually probably hurting them more than it will hurt me. Oh, Shatter Skull. That's a nice top deck. Okay. It's not a land down. Good for us. We're going to hold everything from here on out. Don't need to be playing any more lands because I have a channeler. Uh, Uncle DB, it might be. My back is slightly killing me. Start with the Season Pyromancer. This gets us more. Thought Seize looks good here. Uh, I'll take a... Oof, if they find their forest, I don't think they play forest. Let's go ahead and attack for one here, and I'm going to hold the land. <clears throat> All right. Got some power on the board. I'd like to see one more instant or sorcery speed thing so that channel will be a little bit bigger. We know about the recourse, recross the path. My opponent finds their mana morpho, so they get to reset their hand here, which is pretty, pretty good for them. I took it in fears of a land and a char belcher not being able to kill that, thinking that mana morphos was the less likely, which probably is the case. My back sore from going to the post office with all those packages. I apparently slept really weird one night and I think it messed up my back. Not kidding. Wife said, yeah, when I woke up, I looked over and you were like twisted. I was apparently, my feet were like forward and a little bit to the left. And then my back and head was to the right. And then apparently I was hanging slightly kind of like near the edge of the bed. So I was like probably curved. <laughs> All right. Do we get punished for this? Eh, maybe, maybe. I take the card based on Blood Moon, stopping them from casting this. So they have to hit a four of where if they get the Iron Crag and they find their Char Belcher, I think it's... You know, you know, if I took this card before, it would have been land into Char Belcher. It's my favorite programming language. It would depend on the task at hand. My opponent's like assembling whatever they want here. Hmm. <clears throat> Putting cards to the bottom of their library, one by one. One by one.
There's a lot of programming languages out there, MRT. Java, C, C++, Python, Ruby, Ruby on Rails. You have some of the more programming things for webs, ASP, PHP, Ajax. Bash scripting, Unix PowerShell scripting. Python, but I need more practice. I'm good with Unix and Cisco iOS. Nice. Yeah, I guess it's what iOS is there, but there's, what is it called now? Swift or something like that. Scala, J functional, R functional. <clears throat> Some weird stuff out there. All right, my opponent has put one card to the bottom. They revealed all this stuff and now they've put a card. They put another card. Am I a programmer? Sort of. At least that's what I learned to do. Whether I do that today or not, sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. All right. I feel like they're learning how to assemble this combo or something. They, at five minutes, did this and that seven started putting cards to the bottom. So you put Reforge a soul and then you put kind of whatever seven you need. In this case, my opponent needs a land, Iron Crag, um, Char Belcher, plus some rituals here because the Reforge, I think, is two mana. So if you put land, so two mana for Reforge. So it's Reforge, land, or Simeon Spirit Guide, um, ritual, ritual, Iron Crag, Char Belcher should do it. Last year started with some programming with Python. Now it's starting with Java JavaScript. Java and JavaScript are very different. I didn't get a lot of Python like learning knowledge. In school, I've had to learn on my job. So my Python is very rudimentary, but Python's interesting. Python is useful for data mining and banks these days. Yep. We're doing quick tasks as well. Can be really good. Used um, Python thing. I guess my first Pythoning program since I had to do it on the job was an HTML cleansing parser thing. It was kind of weird. I built a very Java-like for the object-oriented folks out there. All right, we're still putting cards to the bottom here. Uh, once you put so many cards down, if you don't care about the rest of the library and how it's essentially configured, uh, what you can do is you can uh, just hit any order from there on and it'll throw the rest of the cards underneath. You do not have to click all 50 something cards you have. I think we lose this though and We'll probably, I hate to say this, but we might, we might take out our own blood moons, bring collective brutalities in. Maybe we just keep them in here. I don't, I don't have a lot for them. I can play Ashiok trying to mill their win conditions, but. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Learn to code, kids. You don't learn to code just for your day to day. It's still pretty good to, to know. Thirteen cards, twelve. Eleven more cards. They're putting them all, they're meticulously stacking their library. That's like cheating. <laughs> But yeah, it'll help you. It'll help you talk to technical folks if you learn a little bit of coding. Even if you just take a class or two, it'll it'll help. Now we have zero cards. Now what are we doing? We good? My turn. Mm. 
Head scratching. Head scratching. <laughs> There's nine cards now. 47. There you go. Turn Timber versus Channeler is the clash. So they decide to put a Turn Timber on top. I'm going to put this to the bottom because this doesn't win me the game. All right. I will take, ooh, Skelemental. Let's uh, let's go ahead and activate Channeler here. No, 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 no. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine. That'd be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's use Channeler here because if I can get it to seven, and also, like a bolt here. Oh, is f I guess I'll play a new channeler here. So one, two, three, lightning scale mental. This sets me up for potentially lethal because the channeler here will allow me to potentially find and discard a card and I'm gonna make them discard too. So we'll see if they needed this turn timber. We'll see if they needed that land. I kind of assume we're dead here, but what's up, King Magic? If we're not dead, we have three hits to kill them with. So there's the Reforge. <clears throat> so we should be dead here. We'll see, though. Made it, made it a bit of a game. <laughs> By the way, I didn't hit a single instant speed spell. Awkward. All right, Simeon Spirit Guide. Simeon Spirit Guide. Simeon Spirit Guide. Iron Crag. Char Belts or Kill. So we kill if we get the recourse. Recross. All right, activate. Hit me. All right, so we got to beat a Goblin Charbelcher list. I don't think they convert so heavily into an other list style. So we're going to do Collective Brutalities here. This is probably a reasonable hazard. I like the potential of Ashiok to mill over some of their win conditions. I think for us, Blood Chiefs and Fatal Push can come out easy peasy. That's the brutalities in Ashiok. And then let's see if we can slap a hazard in here. Honestly, Channel is probably just a touch slow. We could play the hazard on turn four and do five possibly to them. I could also just not worry about like Blood Moon here and just have the extra creature. I wonder if I have to worry about them converting to anything that would spill stuff into the graveyard and kill us. I'm gonna go with no <laughs> and then get punished when they have some way to convert over to some something else. But I think this list is very much more all in on the combo. And so let's try to let's try to prevent that from happening. Thought seizes, inquisitions, lightning scale mentals, Liliana's, collective brutalities. These are ways to prevent my opponent from playing. Tempting to keep maybe the Blood Moon in over a Dark Confidence, just because we could shut down the cross. So let's do that. All right, let's play first. Well, I'm gonna keep this because we have the Ashok, and I talked about maybe milling over their win conditions or stopping them in weird ways. And the Inquisition's not a bad card to see here, so <clears throat> let's do that. We don't have a very aggressive attacking hand, unfortunately, but 
That's what it is. There. Um, they already have the Char Belcher in hand. I need to prevent some of this acceleration, so I probably just take... I'm super tempted to take the land, but I know they have more lands. But I'm super tempted to. Hmm. I take the Simeon Spirit Guide. <clears throat> I want to take that land so bad, but I'm gonna take the Simeon Spirit Guide. Uh, there's no real replacement for Season Pyromancer. It just depends on what you, what you're you're changing and what list you're specifically talking about as well. All right. We got really no actions here, so we'll just pass turn. Because if you're talking about prison, that's one thing. If you're talking about um, Ponza, that's another. Gruel, that's another. Man, they hit both of their lands here. They just hit one more land, and we're just like toast. So I missed Thought Seize. We're going to play Ashiok. And just go after them here. But if they hit another land, they just Desperate Ritual, uh, Iron Crag, and win. Not really much I can do here without more hand disruption. We do go over four lands, so that's that's a positive, I suppose. If they get like a tap land in here too, it's no good for them. All right, so they win. <clears throat> so they just go, they go Desperate, Ritual, 3, 4, Iron Crag, Char Belcher. They've already done that. So we'll move on. Moving on. Got turn 3 and then didn't take the one card that probably, in hindsight, killed us. But at the same time, you flip it on the other side and... Could have could have drawn out the other way. I'm assuming that this is still for like Rakdos here. And then that just depends on like your other cards. Like you could replace it with a Liliana Last Hope. You could replace it with a couple more Dark Confidants and Globe Lower. You could replace it with Luris, like a pair of Lurises and a pair of Bobbles or, or something. You'd have to see the rest of the list to determine what's a good replacement. You can't just blindly say this card's going to replace because that... Your deck changes slightly by playing something different, so... I can't, I can't give a suggestion unless I knew more. Uh, I mean, I could say play Rabble Master, but that's probably not a good idea. All right, let's keep a loose hand here and see how it fares here in the meta. Keeping Dark Confidant and hoping to Fatal Push their first thing. We're seeing Omnath, so, you know, <laughs> creatures, right? Yeah, but to, to just note, blindly telling you a card and then looking at your list and being like, oh, you wanted something more mid-range than aggro. Totally different answers. Basic planes, giver? Yeah, I'll take it. Right, I'll take the giver, not not the worst card for us to see. All right, let's see if we can beat our opponent. We're gonna start with Dark Confidant to encourage potentially a bolt. Sorry, not a bolt, a path. But if they don't have the path and they just have Creature, Thalia, Stoneforge Mystic, whatever it might be, it's super nice to have the Dark Confidant to start drawing cards to try to win this game. 
So my opponent allows the trigger to happen here and I get the path, so we'll take that win. Drew a channeler and underneath this there is a Liliana. Let's play a Liliana here, I think. Seems reasonable. We're gonna be playing two channelers. As soon as you get two channelers, it gets worse, by the way. Always gets worse when you get your second one. Letting Bob draw is almost never right. Yeah, I got an extra card there. I'm pretty happy about it. Three mana, Skyclave. Hits Liliana, all right, that's fine. Okay with that. Blood Moon's not looking very hot right now. <laughs> we'll just play two channelers here and hold Blood Moon. <clears throat> Use the channelers to potentially dig for answers, interaction, whatever it may be. Uh, we can hit our land drops, all kinds of stuff. Now keep in mind, after I do this once, then it's just not gonna get very good after the fact, just because we have a pair of them already. Now if we had Bob out here too, Bob draw plus the double channelers, and you could use something like that. We may be going down to one channeler here though with a Skyclave, although we're playing for four, so there's a path. Okay. Um, take more red at this point. Okay, an Archon and Skyclave here. Interesting. Well, we have a Bolt. Huh. Uh. How much do I care about this? I don't know. I want to get rid of just Blood Moon here. They already have three planes. Kind of want to hold my land for a moment here. We have the Bolt. We have a Skelemental here as well. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I can Bolt Archon here. I can Skelemental then right after. I can get rid of their last card, which is super sweet. Looking pretty good. In for six. Down to 14, discard the card. No Blood Moon, kept the Blood Crypt. We're doing the mid-range thing. You haven't eaten a McDonald's in over five years? Cool. <laughs> Dolly is pretty good against us. Lightning Scale Mental is, after all, a 6-1. We draw an Inquisition, which is a useless card. Let's get rid of that. Oh, we find two more useless cards. <laughs> All right, go ahead, opponent. We may not even fetch with this. At least not initially, I don't know. Giver, mm -hmm. uh oh. Attack me for four. Do I go down more? Let's go down further, let's fetch. Blood Crypt, leaving the Basic swamp in case we find ourselves against another path. Down to nine. There's an Inquisition. I don't like that. Could use it and just attack, but I think I wanna I wanna look for something better. What's up, bunny? So I could unearth a skelemental. That is it, or I can bolt like Gibber or Skyclave. Definitely gonna take the bolt. I saw your Grixis Fairies list. It's very interesting. I'm super tempted to bolt the Liliana. I think I think bolting the sorry bolting the skyclave before giver comes off, so I get a three three. Now I have a three three blue and a four four red creature. And yes, giver can like punch through for two here with Thalia, but they have to activate and use Thalia, which feels fine. Oh, that's not auto yield. All right, this looks completely fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh yeah, all right. Um, 
One, two, three, one, two, three. We're gonna use Channeler here to get rid of Blood Crypt. See what else I draw. There's a Season Pyromancer and a Fatal Push. I'm gonna grab the Fatal Push here. We're gonna use Season Pyromancer to see what else I draw. Now we have lots of cards and options. Apparently all lands. <laughs> Go ahead and fatal push the giver here. And um, I can probably just hold these two lands. They could ghost quarter me right now. Not super worried about a ghost quarter. I guess I'll play the land just so I don't get ghost quartered. I don't know why, but could happen. Could happen. Okay, so Giver's down. We killed the Skyclave. Got the 3-3, three, three, the 4-4, four, four, and the 2-2. Two, two. Might be time to start attacking. Oh, one of my opponents just done with us. Woohoo, Groxa. Yes. All right, this is definitely the Plague Engineer matchup. Plague Engineer. I wonder if my opponent will search. They could. Stoneforge Mystic could be a thing. Is it just Kalidus? I do like I do like um, Rakdos. It's definitely becoming one of my favorite color combinations, and I don't know if that's just because I played Blood Moon for so long. I have to say, when I look back on the two guild, the three or well, I say two, really the three guilds that I kind of liked playing, Rakdos was one of them. I like Simic. Selesnia and Rakdos. I always like playing kind of Naya at times. I like playing Teamer. I'm, I'm just everything. Yeah, I'm just everything. What are we talking about? Let's kill some sacrifice some creatures here. Uh, Blood Moon, probably worth taking out and just going super mid range here. Skelmenters are going to be weak, but I don't think I want to pull these out because if we do get ahead of our opponent, these just turn into lands for us through path, or they go uh, and hit them and make them discard. Fatal Push good, Blood Chief's good. I don't mind the Unearth here. I probably could just take one out because they're gonna path a lot of our stuff. And um, we just need one more. Maybe it's just another Unearth out. Trim Croxa? Uh, Croxa's a big juicy 6-6. Six -six. And although it's not gonna always hit, I, I'd almost prefer to see a Croxa here than like Skelemental or maybe even this Unearth. I'm gonna take one Thoughtseize out. I don't know, I, I don't like to go fully in on like removing my graveyard strategy because if they don't have Rip or they don't have a way to interact, it is something that I can pool on later in the game. So that's why I like the Croxas, that's why I like a little bit of Unearth. Skelemental is actually one of the weaker cards due to like a Thalia or anything with first strike. Stoneform Mystic, finding Maul will just give them first strike. And then that Skelemental just becomes a dead 6-1 in our hand. Because this game goes a little bit long, I'm tempted to keep this, although I have four fetches, which worries me. Let's let's risk it. Let's risk it. Can't be that bad, right? Channeler, another another land from a path. <laughs> Season Pyromancer is going to get rid of some of these lands I can't use. There's Aether Vial. We'll just find that Angrath off the top, right? It's not a bad one right there. Let's fetch. I want to go basic. I'm afraid of fields. I want to. I want to. I don't ever do what I want, though. All right, so we have Flicker Wisp, Giver, Skyclave, and Stoneforge. Well, Stoneforge is kind of a pain for us to beat, so. Double Giver is going to be tough, too. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. They're on one land. We're going to see two Givers here. I almost want to find my interactive spell, like a Fatal Push Lightning Bolt right here. Ooh, second land. All right. Giver number one, giver number two. Because this is the point where I could interact with them. Two givers, Flicker with Skyclave in hand. 
All right, Dark Confidant or Channeler? Hmm. So I can't play either of these. Which one do I want to get the most value out of? Let's take a draw with Dark Confidant. We'll test our life total here very much. Yeah, the cycling on, on the Unearth is definitely a nice upside that doesn't punish us if we keep the Unearth in hand. Or sorry, in the in the list, not in hand. Ooh, or you have champions, a card we can't beat very well. All right, Dark Confidant, don't hurt us too much. Nice, good job, good job, good job, good job. Champion right there. All right, let's go Inquisition, Steel Skyclave here. And Channeler, because we're going to have to dig for some way to uh, eventually kill everything, which is going to be super difficult. <laughs> super difficult. J Bears, what's up? The opponent's deck is pretty sweet. It's just hate bears for the most part. So we'll go up to three. We got Flicker Wisp. Got whatever they draw here. Two Givers is going to be tough. Maybe I should have taken the Giver, although. I wonder how we beat this card. <laughs> you, you know, I wonder. Yeah. All right, Dark Confidant, be kind to us. Let's just yield to this. Just take the pain instantly. Woohoo! Land, thank goodness. All right. Um, let's let's dig further. Okay, there's a Croxa. That's one of our positive cards here. Let's play Croxa. so we don't want to lose this. Flicker Wisp and an unknown card. Stack, stack, stack. Yield, yield, yield. Plague Engineer. We did bring Plague Engineer in, so we do have to find it. It's probably worth fetching here to put in the extra channeler, because we know it's just Flicker Wisp over there. Not worried about Oriok's ability here. We need to somehow clear the board and maybe even take care of our own Dark Confidant. How has Channeler felt? Channeler's been fairly strong, um, but this is a great example. I would hold that Flicker Wisp. Don't put that in. Oh my gosh, you're insane. Uh -huh. Ch Channeler's like this in doubles makes it really awkward unless you have a draw engine. Kirkinator, what's up? Thank you so much for the resub. How goes it? Two months. Two months is good. Two months is an excellent number. All right, Aether Vial staying where it is. I suppose the Flicker Wisp is just trying to kill me faster here, and with two givers, it's pretty safe. Silent clearing trigger, or draw here. One drop, two drop. Who knows? Pretty easy attack for four here. Put me to nine. All right, we're going to get our... Channeler back. They, they gain a life, that's fine. All right, Dark Confidant. Ooh, Season Pyromancer kind of hurt a little bit there. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So we have maximum five mana here. Let's go ahead and use Channeler number one to get rid of something. And top of the library is. Lightning Skelemental and Prismatic Vista. Ugh, I don't like either of these. Let's go ahead and go one more time here. The Liliana. Could use Liliana twice. Liliana down tick. Play this land, Croxa maybe. Uh, 
I don't know. So down to here, we have another Liliana, but they might just play another creature here to save their creatures as well. We do get a giver, all right. Three, four damage. Three, four, and I have a Dark Confidant here. We're gonna be going to game three. It's annoying to play against. It's all right. It's just it's mono white, like, hey bear taxes. Yeah, it just hit me for four. I wouldn't even attack there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit my face. All right, we're at two with a Dark Confidant. Maybe I don't want the Dark Confidant here in game three and four, and five and six, and seven and eight. New Thalia, that makes things real awkward if I find Fatal Pushes. Dark Confidant, don't kill me. Dang, what's up, Croxa? What's up, Croxa? Channelers would have found a Fatal Push because I'd find these two and then these two cards. <laughs> All right, we do have the Plague Engineer in. Um, maybe, maybe I just need to bring the Collective Brutalities in as ways to also remove creatures. Let's strip out a Croxa, a Skelemental, and let's see, what else do we want here? Kind of tempted to just do one more Skelemental here and just be like hyper removal. We could take out a Thought Seize. But we're on the play now. Wondering if a hazard would make sense. Take out one thought, sees so bringing unearth back, and it didn't seem like they attacked my graveyard. That may not make sense though, because their removal spell is path. It's just all paths. Like, don't do these and, and just do a crocs instead. And then bring one skeletal back in as like a finisher. You could even like hazard instead of skeletal. It's like not the worst. You can punch through. Oh, you hate Thotsies? <laughs> you don't like playing against this card? I'm tempted because I'm on the play to keep the Thotsies here and just drop the skeletal package entirely. I'm gonna drop a Dark Confidant, but I. I <laughs> it's one of Skelemental's going to be how we win this game. Let's just put it that way. All right. I like this hand. Plenty of things to do to our opponent. This looks good. Take Stoneforge and Gratham, Fatal Push them, whatever we need to here. <laughs> All right. Well, huh? Mm -hmm. eh. Eh, I think I take that Oriarch Champion here. Angrath's a little weird with the two Aether Vials. Planes and what? Aether Vial here? I wonder if I play this Channeler next. Channeler next and then Angrath plus Fatal Push next turn. That's always reasonable. Being able to play as efficiently as possible is always appreciated. Where are our Dread of Knights? <laughs> Alright, Aether Vial's up to one here. I assume it's just Plains' new Aether Vial. Okay. Do we want to put the giver in? Oh, 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 okay. Well, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a few Aether Vials you got there. Let's go ahead and use this discard on Marsh Flats. See what else we can find. I do like a bolt here. <laughs> we'll set that stop. Search for basic here so I can put channeler down. 
Here we go again that we have two channelers. We're, we're gonna do with these two channelers is because I have so many spells here. Um, we're going to try to make it so that my channelers become four fours in this next turn, hopefully. And if I can do that, then they'll be a nice quick clock. I'm wondering if I pass priority here and let them Aether Vial in, knowing that I have a Lightning Bolt. I'm going to go for it. All right. <clears throat> I'm not totally dismayed by that because we know two of their cards here and they're not creatures. I don't get the Bolt, but they don't get really an active giver here which is super important to me because if they got like a Stoneforge Mystic, Fatal Pushing, I guess I could Angrath as well, but if we get a couple creatures here, having an active giver, they could, they could defend one of them pretty easily, which is not something I want to be doing. All right, because we have so many Aether Vials, we're going to be playing at instant speed. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go combat. <laughs> I'm just gonna pass here. I've got the fatal push. I want to use the fatal push. There's the giver. I'm just gonna cast it now. Cool. Anything else? Yes, no. All right, didn't feel like flashing anything in. That's that's good for us. Aether Vial is going to three, two, probably staying at one. And this is probably where they'll rest. All right. It's a shame that both of my kill spells here are more instant or sorcery speed. Field of Ruin. Okay. Let's activate one of these. Ugh, oh, I like both of these cards. I like them, but are they really that good? All right, let's give up on them. I'm gonna give up on them. Goodbye cards. All right. It also allowed Channeler to grow here, which is super nice. So, sort of a reason to go ahead and do that. Go get our Swamp here. We'll use Blood Chiefs on the Stone Forge here, since we're still in main phase. I'm going to hope they don't have Flicker Wisp. If they do, then we get really kind of blown out there. This is good, because now they've got a bit of a, a stuck Batter Skull. I have two 4-4s, four a 2-2, two two and a 1-1. One one. Batter Skull, two unknown cards. Looking good. Looking good. Everything stays at rest here for the Aether Vials. They flash nothing else in there. Not a Skyclave to stop the Channeler from attacking. Um, not a Flicker Wisp to stop it from attacking. We have just a Ghost Quarter here. Um, Leonin Arbiter is annoying, but not game ending here. I feel like we're in a reasonably good spot. An Inquisition. So the question is, do we want to fire Inquisition off to see what else they have? and then attack, or use this to dig deeper? Hmm, these are questions. One, it could have a path or two. I can't imagine this Inquisition gets there very well, but we are also presenting 12 points of damage, which is just very close to lethal. It's tempting to peek, but I know Batter Skull, so is it worth peeking for like, probably a path that they have. I suppose. I suppose it can be. And then just attack with two 4-4s four here and just take the path. 
Oh, we have a two drop. If it's another stone forger, it's gonna be really upsetting. It's a Thalia. Alright. Field and battle. Field and battle scroll. Uh, swing everything. Swinging everything, we lose something to Thalia. Not too worried about that. I'll hit them for 10. Down to four. Both channelers are lethal. My opponent's drawing a card. They can block one of these and Skyclave one, possibly. They could path one and block one. This Field of Ruin allows them both play a Batter Skull. So that might be just their turn here. Have to look for a bit of a removal spell, I suppose. Yeah, Thalia's taxi on Batter Skull too. Guess that's true. Poor opponent. Poor opponent. Draw, use Channeler if they were able to. Find Bolt. Bolt off their face and <laughs> swing. We wouldn't swing then. Following turn, Liliana down tick or draw to Croxa. There we go. There we go. 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two with a punt earlier that would have been given us a 3-1. I'll own that punt. Thalia made them scoop. Yeah, when they played the Thalia in because it forced the hand and then they had the land for the battle skull. Should have just let me take it, but if then I take it, then I'm attacking for enough that makes the next turn lethal even if they play Battle Skull, right? They needed another creature. Pretty sure. Not sure. Check math. Let's go. What a hand. What a hand. Who plays one, two drops? It's all about them three drops and magic. Gotta get that winning record. Exactly. Let's go. This awkward double red pip, double red pip, double black pip, blood moon hand. What a strange hand it is. We're good now. We're good now. All right, what are you, my red white opponent? I'm about to have everything I need. Fetch that non basic. Go, go, go. Oh, basic. Oh, Oriok champion. I guess I have to... Ugh. I mean, like, Blood Moon doesn't shut this down that much. I guess it's Liliana down tick. Oriok Champion's a real problem for us. It's not pro sacrifice, this is very true. But, uh... This is really good against us. Playing that Rakdos and having to run into these. All right, another basic here. Blood Moon's starting to get weird looking. Strange. Oh my gosh, you have another one. Leave me alone. All right, well, Lily's going up here. I'm getting rid of the Blood Moon. I don't need that card anymore. When in doubt, smash face. Yeah, it's probably a smash face turn. Just hope they don't ruin me here and then I can play Channel plus Season Pyromancer. Smash face, make them discard more cards. Got rid of a cavern. Whoosh. In for six. It is a nice avatar, the Obsidat. It's nice. Two tr or five trample goes over. I guess it's four worth because they gained one life when ETB'd. Luckily, it's not first strike. Thank goodness. Sunbaked Canyon and an Archon. All right, all right. Oh boy. Oh boy. Heliod, Sun Crowned. Uh, this is gonna get real big, like real big. Um, I 
I do have Rain and Gore sideboard. I think I've just got to set myself up for the best next turn. So we'll discard. We can go fetch. Basics fine. And then put Channeler down and Season Pyromancer. This makes Oriok champion of champions. But I've got to. I got to just got to hope. Got to live the dream. So Channeler first. They're going to gain. Heliod's going to do Heliod things, making it big. The beef. Yeah, it's going to be Channeler and Season Pyromancer today. We're losing Liliana anyway, so this is a draw two, draw for the turn, and then potentially two more. So we're looking one, two, draw, three, four, three, four five, potentially. So we'll look about five deep looking for basically Liliana number two. We have two left in the list because I'm certain they're going to come in here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Ah. Range are pretty good. Hell yeah. Beefy. Uh oh. All right. Goodbye, Liliana. Goodbye. Five to my face. I guess I can block this, right? It's, it's not like, it's probably not like it matters, but preserving some life total here is, is welcome. <laughs> All right, Random Gore, I'm gonna have to see this do wonders for us. We may need the beater. I don't think a 2-2 two -two is going to win here. I think it's just blocked to preserve my life total to hopefully find enough things with the channeler here to deal with this board state. That's not one of them. Get out of here, land. I don't want you. Hmm. Bolt doesn't deal with anything. <laughs> He's in Pyromancer. Makes things bigger. <laughs> this is just like the anti R deck. Get rid of Blood Moon. New ETB. All right. Inquisition and Unearth are interesting cards here. So Inquisition can take the Walking Ballista. So I'm still playing Magic. All right, we're still playing magic and probably just use the unearth here to get the season pyromancer. Could have unearthed the skeletal and hit both cards, uh, but I like this and it also risks this getting too big for the skeletal. All right. We have done things. Is it enough though? No. All right, Archon's played in the sky. This grows to be a 7-7, seven, seven, making it almost a two-turn clock, which is frightening. It's for seven, so I have to kill, like, everything. <laughs> I have to kill everything. Um, so use this. Get rid of Season Pyromancer. Blood Chiefs. Blood Chief to cast Kicker here. We're getting there. I don't know how, but we're getting there. Land Drop. Unearth Season Pyromancer. Keep digging. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. This is gonna become an 8-8, and if they top deck a creature, we die. Oh, we top deck a creature. Can't play that. Pass turn. <laughs> I 
Have I never seen Monty Python? I have. Oh, Heliod. <laughs> Heliod to the rescue. Oriok champion growing to a 9-9 and smacking us for a healthy 9. Dang. Well, we know what we want. Plague Engineer. All right, the list that's literally here to beat us. How to beat them. Plague Engineers. Rain of Gore. Angrafts aren't too bad because sacrifice is a thing. Uh, Ashiok could be a thing and so could Kalidas. So if we're doing this, what do we want to get rid of? Blood Moon seemed pretty bad against them. They're not the green-white version, which is more prone. They're like some weird red-white version, so I don't think Blood Moon makes sense here. I'm afraid of a Dark Confidant just killing us. They know I have some graveyard shenanigans with Unearth. I'm tempted to take that out because I'd probably follow it with their own wrist in peace. Are these two cards worth it? Kalidus and Ashiok. One Crocs would probably make sense. The question is, is it Kalidus or Ashiok? Ranger's kind of a problem because that's how they search up their win conditions. So like an Ashiok may not be bad. Uh, Bolt is fine. I know they had Ariok Champion, but Bolt also kills other things. We saw Aether Vials as well. Kalidus is interesting. Like, Kalidus doesn't work really nicely with Reign of Gore. <laughs> this is symmetrical. If a spell really would cause its controller to gain life, that player loses that much life. Which is just kind of interesting, because then this becomes a liability. I think I'm going to go with the uh, random Ashiok to either mill over their win condition or stop them from playing Ranger. Let's obviously play first here. Ooh. I want to keep so bad. Oh, I want to keep so bad, but our 3-2 our is on the line here. I Oh my gosh, I slipped. We'll blame it on the mouse. Bad mouse. Bad mouse. Unbelievable. Well, at least I could blame it on something. Thank goodness. Oops, oops. I have done that where I've done this and I... I kind of like twitched, like like one of those little little spasms. Sometimes you can get like anywhere, and I like boom, and it was Mulligan. I was like, oh my gosh, this hand's great, Uncle DB. Don't worry, we've got we got turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. What are these cards? These are bystanders. We're just gonna watch. Exclamation point deck should work. If it's not, you can yell at MTG bot or you broke it. You probably broke it. All right, give her runes. I'm gonna get that Oriok champion next. See, you broke it. Blame it on the rain. Give me the extra land here for the double thought seas. Land. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, Oriok champion gone. They just have a Luminarch, which we have interaction for. Thank goodness. My opponent has all of our lands, though. Undo, undo. Undo, tap, undo, undo, tap, 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 tap. Question mark. They don't do anything. We get to pass the turn. Do I really pass the turn? Yes, I'm going to pass the turn. 
I want to use this thought seize for later. I'm gonna gonna look like I just ran out of gas. I needed a two drop. This is the bait something played. Like walking ballista. That's what I'm talking about. Get bolted, ballista. Ha! Big brain plays here. Gotta work with the cards that we have. Now this becomes a 2-2. Two -two. We can deal with that. Give me a land. Oh my gosh. What are lands? They don't exist. Going to Thoughtseize my opponent, even though I know both cards. Go ahead, opponent. All right, this thought sees is pretty useless now. That's okay though. That's okay. There we go. <laughs> yes, Nightbot's real. <laughs> hey, we found a land. All right, it's time to play magic. So. Let's Thought Seize to see what the other card is in case it's a two drop Oriarch Champion. And then we'll just fetch for a non basic here. All right, so they're completely empty handed, although they have a Sun Baked. This way I have the double red for Season Pyromancer, and I didn't have to like fetch Shock to put this in. I did the fetch and the Shock, but I got to check the hand in case they had the, the Champion. Champion's scary. Sun Baked Canyon. We're not talking. We're not talking, opponent. We're not talking. All right, channel her down here. Kept the sketchy hand. We do have a 4-4, four -four. you know, that's something. Nice top deck, it's really good. Oh, oh, Heliod, oh, yes. That's fine. Opponent, I, I trust you to have Walking Ballista right here. Arid Mesa down, play that Walking Ballista, and I just hit this button rapidly. There you go. Fetch, perfect. 1-1 one, one Walking Ballista, Oriot Champion Trigger, Heliod give the thing, end me. Oh, okay, they didn't do it. Woo, we live on. Oh, it's Ranger. Oh, it's basically the same thing. Opponent wins. They're a professional. This is ridiculous. This is a sweet list too. No, kill me. What are you doing? Just end me. Why are we attacking? Yep. Even protection with the ranger. Can't even instant speed smack this. It's a combo. That's a combo. My opponent comboed us. They got us. Heliod activation. Smack me. Hell yeah, I'd like, stop walking, Ballista. I'm your friend. Have that piece of your part that you threw at your opponent back. I rebuilt it for you. Oh, thanks. Let me throw it again. Whew. Gets its arm back. Thanks, Hell yeah. Whew. Oh, thanks, Hell yeah. Whew. Two, three with the list with one mega punt. In that game, I did two punts. Mentally, it messed me up for the rest of the league. And this is what resulted, a loss. But remember, we don't always win on this channel. We're very real. Otherwise, we just record all our videos and every two weeks you would see, oh, Fluffy got a 5-0. What, Fluffy played three decks during that 5-0? Yep. Yeah, it took me three lists to get five wins. <laughs> 2-3 with a list, Rakdos mid-range, a list that went top four in the recent challenge here. Definitely got some power. I did run into two lists sporting Oriok champion. If that becomes a normal thing, consider Plague Engineer or your own walking ballistas. You do have Angras Rampage, Liliana, and that should be decent enough to create them the, the sacrifice effects, but if you do find yourself a few more of those, bump up maybe the Lilianas, who knows.
List is pretty sweet though, and although our result was not very good today with it, I would most certainly recommend uh, Rakdos is a very strong archetype right now. And I think these cards in general fit into several decks. If you don't want to go the full Jund, but you like maybe red, but you don't like to be so aggro, I think this is I think this is the spot to be. If you don't have Dark Confidants, you can switch that out for uh, Dreadhorde Arcanists. You can play more Skelementals. You can play Lurus if you want to. We have our own Lurus Skelemental Kitty list. I'll link that somewhere in YouTube world, and someone in chat will probably link it as well. Sweet list. Didn't do so well. That doesn't always matter. It was fun. Rakdos midrange. Did he really top deck Oriok, then Heliod, then Ranger? Yes.